Making your own AT Tiny programmer is relatively easy to do. Uh, uh, to find additional information on uh, how to do so and uh, other information about using AT Tiny uh, chips, go to my website tiny.akrobotnerd.com. There you'll find you know bill of materials and tutorials on how to program them and whatnot. Um, as for parts, you're going to need the uh, printed circuit board. You're going to need some, uh, one female header that we're going to cut up to the right length. You're going to need a capacitor here. Uh, I believe this is a 10 microfarad capacitor. And then you're going to need at least one um, integrated circuit socket. So uh, this is the 14 pin integrated circuit socket that uh, is used with the AT Tiny 84s. And then this is an 8 pin integrated circuit socket that's used with the AT Tiny 85s. If you're only going to program 84s, then you only need this one. If you're only going to program 85s, you're only going to need this one. But if you want to be able to program both, well, then you'll need both. The first step is going to require cutting this female header down to the right length. So I'm going to put it on this Arduino Nano here. You actually don't have to push it on all the way. We just need to have it on here so we can measure. And I can see that the last pin that marries up with Arduino Nano is right here. So I'm going to go to the very next one. And I'm going to pull that one out. And then I'm going to use my flush cutters to cut it right along there. And I could clean this up a little bit. The end here, you can see there's still some uh, plastic there. I'm going to try and clean that up just a little bit with my flush cutters. If I can, great. If it, I can't, no big deal. That's what the sandpaper is here for. To use the sandpaper, I just take this and rub it right along the end there, just like that. Take a look at the end. Looks like I could go just a little bit further. This sandpaper is probably a little bit too fine for this job, but that's okay. It just takes a little bit longer. And that's good enough for this, uh, for this um, board right now. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So I'm going to line this up just like that so that I can tell which pin I need to pull. It looks like I need to pull this one right here. And then that's exactly where I'm going to cut it. You probably want to grab the other end of that instead of uh, letting it shoot off like a bullet like I just did. That'll keep it from getting lost and it'll also keep it from hurting any other people that might be in the room. So I'm clipping off as much of that as I can. And then I'm going to sand it to just finish it up here. Make sure you don't sand too much. You don't want to sand until you get to the uh, metal that's inside there. That would not be good. Check it every so often just to make sure you're not doing too much. Okay. That looks good enough for this project. We can move on to the next step. So I've got these cut. Now I could solder these on right away, 
but it's actually more difficult if I solder these on first. So I'm going to solder on the other components first, and then we'll solder those on. Before we start soldering, you might want to clean up your board. You can see right here where it's a little jagged. Well, that's where it was attached to the other boards in that panel. So I'm going to sand the, the board just a tiny bit to get that to be smooth. And I'm not doing a super good job. Um, you don't really need to have that be smooth. It's more of an aesthetic thing than anything else, just to make it look nice. Um, so it's really up to you how much you want to do it. Before I solder on the um, two female headers that I just made, uh, I actually want to solder on the other components. It's a lot easier to solder them on before those headers are on than afterwards. If we look at the capacitor here, you want to make sure that the long lead of the capacitor goes into the hole with the plus sign. If you don't, you will ruin the capacitor. So, I know it needs to go into that hole. Before I put it in, I'm going to put a little bit of flux on the back side. And then I'm going to put the long lead through the plus sign there, the hole with the plus sign. And then I'm going to push my capacitor all the way through. Now that it's all the way through, it's time to solder. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of solder on the end of my iron here. And then I'm going to clean it. And then I'm going to put, because I'm soldering with tin, um, it doesn't melt quite as easy as lead. So uh, to help transfer the heat to the board, I'm going to put just the tiniest amount right on the tip there. You can just barely see there's a little bit of solder on there. And then I'm going to touch it to both the pad and the wire there. Right there. And I'm going to do the same thing right over here. If you watch closely, you'll see that that solder actually just flows right onto the metal. You, if you heat up both the pad and the wire, uh, the solder is almost, it is pulled towards those two things. Here's what it looks like when I'm done. And to finish, I can grab my flush cutters and cut them. Now if you're not sure that you did a good job, I recommend you show it to either me or whoever you're working with before you cut so that we can verify that you put the plus, the long lead through the plus sign. And it should look like that when you're done. Notice that when I cut with the flush cutters, I didn't cut perfectly flush. I didn't get it as close as I possibly could. I left just a little bit there. If you cut too close, you'll actually cut the copper pads off of this board and ruin the board. The next step is to solder the, let's do the AT Tiny 85 socket if you have it. If you're working on projects that require that uh, chip. to put it right through here. And then I'm going to just push it down against the table to make sure that it's pushed all the way into the board. Luckily that capacitor is about the same length, the same height as the uh, socket is there. I'm just going to push that right in there just like that. And I'm just going to move from pin to pin. When you're all done, all right, so when you're done, it should look something like that. One thing I forgot to mention is that you need to make sure 
that the socket, the little indent there, is towards the top, that it matches the silk screen below it. Um, that way when you're plugging in your chip, it's easy for you to remember and see how it's supposed to be plugged in. Next, it's time to do the 14-pin socket if you're going to program ATtiny84s. I'm just putting one stripe of flux along each one of those columns. And as I just mentioned, make sure that the notch in your socket that you see at the top here lines up with the notch that we see in the circuit board over here, right at the top there. I'm going to push it down well so that the um, socket doesn't get only uh, get soldered in at an angle. When you're all done, it should look something like that. Now it's time to solder the headers for the Arduino Nano. Um, and before I solder them in, I want to show you something that uh, can happen sometimes. When you solder these in, it's possible that you solder them in at a slight angle. And if you solder them too far off, then it makes it really hard to plug in your uh, Arduino Nano. So to prevent that from happening, I'm actually going to um, plug these into my Arduino Nano. Just like that. And then I'll put some flux right where I'm going to solder. And then I'm going to plug my Arduino Nano into my board just like that. So now I have something that looks just like this. And the, the advantage to doing this is if I look down now, it's impossible for these things to be at an angle. They're, they're going to get soldered in correctly because um, they're, they're being held by the thing that they're going to be plugged into. So now it's just a matter of soldering each one of these pins. Once you're all done soldering, your board should look something like this. And you can clean it up. And you should do this over a trash can so these don't shoot off like little bullets. Um, face this down over a trash can and then just clip the ends so that they're not quite so long. So now you have a very handy tool for uh, programming uh, AT Tiny microchips. Make sure that when you plug in your uh, Arduino Nano, this USB port right here is on the same side as the letters that say USB.